Okay, my AP Calc champions in this problem. We're going to be considering this function y equals f of x, whose curve is given by the equation 2y squared minus 6 is equal to y times sine of x, where y is greater than 0. So our first problem asks us to show that dy over dx is equal to this. So let's go ahead and differentiate this with respect to x, and let's see what we come up with. So every time we see a y and we're taking the derivative of it, we're going to attach a dy over dx to it because we're differentiating with respect to x, right? So we have 2y squared minus 6 is equal to y sine of x. So let's take the derivative. So the derivative of 2y squared is going to be 4y dy over dx. Derivative of minus 6 is just a constant, so it just goes away. And then here we're going to have to use our product rule. So let's take the derivative of y first. So it's just going to be dy over dx times sine of x plus, and uh, now we keep the y the same, but we take the derivative of our sine of x, so that's going to be cosine of x. Okay, so now we have dy dx on both sides of our equation. We're going to want to have it only be on one side, so let's go ahead and subtract uh, sine of x dy dx from both sides, so 4y dy over dx minus sine of x dy over dx equal to y times cosine of x. Now we can factor out our dy over dx because on the left side both of our terms have a dy over dx. So now this is what we get. So now we can divide both sides by 4y minus sine of x to actually solve for our dy over dx. So we get y cosine of x over 4y minus sine of x is equal to dy over dx. And you'll notice ding, 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 it matches exactly with our derivative. So this problem, um, make sure that your derivatives look the same, otherwise you're probably not going to get the points. And they're basically telling you that the derivative is this, and you just have to show your work for how you got to that. Next question. So this one says to write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point 0 square root of 3. We can use our point slope form, so that would be y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1, where our m is our slope, and then we're passing in some point x1, y1, and then our x and our y is going to stay the same. This is These are like placeholders for solving for that. We're going to need to figure out our slope, so let's go ahead and use our dy over dx that we just solved for in the last problem. And we can plug in 0 for x and square root of 3 for y. So we get dy over dx is equal to square root of 3 times cosine of 0 over 4 times the square root of 3 minus sine of 0. For these problems, it's a really, really good idea to know what the graph of sine, the graph of cosine looks like. So the graph of cosine starts up at 1 for x is 0, and then it dips down to 0 at pi over 2, and then continues like that. Our sine actually starts at 0, 0, and then it hits 1 at pi over 2, and then it hits back over to the x-axis. This is cosine of x, this is sine of x. So if we're trying to find what cosine of 0 is, that would be 1. And we would do 4 times the square root of 3 minus the sine of 0. That would be 0. So we get the square root of 3 over 4 times the square root of 3. These two square roots can cancel out, so we get that our slope at this point is 1, 4. Cool, that's part of the information that we need for our point slope form. Now we just need this point. Well, lucky, lucky for us, we were given a point. So we can go ahead and plug all that information into our point slope form. So y stays the same. y minus square root of 3. It's equal to 1 fourth times x minus, what's our x coordinate? It's 0. So that's pretty easy for us. We can simplify it a little bit more. So this is just going to go away. If we were to distribute our one, minus 1 fourth, we would get this. So this would just go away. So now we can get y is equal to 1 fourth x plus as our final answer for the slope aligned tangent to the curve. Alright, next problem is this one says that between 0 and pi 
inclusive for x and y is greater than zero, we're trying to find the coordinates of the point where the line tangent of the curve is horizontal. So if you're seeing this phrase, line tangent of the curve is horizontal, immediately think to yourself, we want to find where dy over dx is equal to zero, right? Our tangent line will be horizontal. That means our tangent line slope is zero. So we would set this equation here equal to zero. So y cosine of x over 4y minus sine of x. So we can multiply both sides by the denominator. So we just kind of get rid of it because we're just multiplying by zero. Y is equal to cosine of x. It would be really easy for us to just say, oh, well, we can just plug in y equals zero and that's going to make this whole thing zero. But remember within our problem, it says that y is actually greater than zero. So we're going to have to solve for this x here for when this will turn this whole right side of the equation zero. So remember our cosine of x looks like this. We're at zero, we're at one, and then at pi over two, we're at zero, and then at pi, we're at minus one. So we're trying to find where cosine of x is equal to zero, and that would be at pi over two. x equals pi over two. And you might notice that it actually also equals zero at three pi over two, but remember our bounds. We're only looking at it from zero to pi, so we would not factor that one in. So the x coordinate is going to be pi over two, and then we need to solve for our y. So we can go ahead and use our f of x to solve for y. So where you have 2y squared minus 6 is equal to y times sine of x. We have our x. It's pi over 2. We can plug that in. Pi over 2. So we get y squared minus 6 is equal to y times. What is sine of pi over 2? Let's scroll back up to our graph. Sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1. So we just multiply this by one. We can subtract our y over to the other side to get y squared minus y minus six equal to zero. This, this is where you want to find your roots. I'm not super great at factoring things out, so I'm just going to use the quadratic formula, which is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if we're using it for this equation, I would say this two is our a, this minus one is our b, and this minus six is our C. So let's go ahead and plug those in to see if we can find those roots. So a minus minus is going to be positive. So one plus or minus the square root of minus one squared minus four times two times minus six all over two times two. So we're gonna get one plus or minus square root of, it's gonna be one minus, oh, plus one plus 48. So this would be 49 all over 4. Square root of 49 is 7. So we're going to get that it's going to be either 8 over 4, which is 2, or it's going to be 1 minus 7, so minus 6 over 4, so minus 3 over 2 for our y. However, remember, the bounds. It's got to be y is greater than 0. So we can get rid of this y because that's not within the bounds, it's not greater than zero. So we know that our y coordinate is gonna be two. So our final answer for this problem is gonna be pi over two comma two. That is the coordinate where the line is horizontal. Final problem, it says determine whether f has a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at the point found in part c and justify your answer. So we know that based off the last problem, we know that the derivative at pi over two comma two is equal to zero. So that means that F has a critical point at pi over two comma two. So now we need to figure out if it's relative minimum, or relative maximum or neither. So we can use our second derivative test at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and take the derivative of this again. This is about to get a little bit complicated. So please hold on to your horses. Since this has a numerator and denominator, we can go ahead and use the quotient rule. We're saying that our u of x is equal to y cosine of x and our v of x, let me make that u a little bit better. Our v of x is equal to 4y minus sine of x. The second derivative will be equal to something to remember. The derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x but the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So make sure to remember this. This is a no calculator problem, so you can't rely on your calculator here. So let's go ahead and get started with this behemoth of a derivative. So we're gonna take the derivative of u first. So that would be 
dy over dx times cosine of x plus, we're using product rule here basically, y times negative sine of x. And then we need to multiply all of that times v of x. So that'd be times 4y times sine of x. So this is this first chunk here. So now we're, we're looking at this. So then we need to subtract u of x. So that would be subtract y cosine of x times the derivative of v of x. So this would be 4 dy over dx minus what is the derivative of sine of x? It's cosine of x. And that's it for our top. And then our bottom down here, we have v of x squared. So that would be 4y minus sine of x squared. Oof, talk about complicated. Okay, so then we know that the critical point is at pi over two comma two. So we can go ahead and plug that in. So x equals pi over two, y equals two, and then the dy over dx at this point is zero. So anywhere we see dy over dx, we can kind of just like get rid of that term. This is gonna be zero. This whole thing is gonna be zero. So we just get rid of it. And then we have four times dy over dx, just get rid of it. It's not gonna be anything. So d squared over, so the second derivative at pi over two comma two is gonna be y times minus sine pi over two times four times two times sine pi over two minus two times cosine of pi over two over four times two minus sine of pi over two and all of this squared. So make sure I got that all right. Oh, two here. Let's continue simplifying it. So remember that sine of pi over two is equal to one and then cosine of pi over two is equal to zero. So that will help us out as well. So anywhere you see a cosine of pi over two, that's gonna be just a zero. So here, there's gonna be a zero, there's gonna be a zero. We're basically just subtracting zero here. So we can just get rid of this whole right term. Okay, then uh, let's plug in one for sine of pi over two. Let me put in some parentheses here to make sure we're doing the right thing. So let's plug in for sine of pi of two is equal to one. So two times minus one times four times two minus one, all over four times two minus one squared. So we're gonna get minus two times, this looks like it's gonna be seven, all over four times two minus one, so that's seven squared. So it's squared, so we can go ahead and get rid of one seven here. So we get minus two over seven as our second derivative at this point. Using the second derivative test, we have determined that this is a local max. So because the second derivative is less than zero, we know that our point pi over two comma two is gonna be a local max because the derivative dy over dx is equal to zero. And then the second derivative less than zero. And those are the conditions by the second derivative test for a local max. So say since dy over dx is equal to zero and the second derivative is less than zero at pi over two comma two, there is a local maximum at that point. So notice we had to have both the derivative be equal to zero and the second derivative be less than zero to have that local max at this point. Hopefully that helps you out with this AP calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.